Welcome to the second video of the Fire System Builder How to Videos, in which we will demonstrate how to configure your network. First you will need to select a network. Here you can find different options, including the standalone system with one panel, the Safe D Link network with a cluster of different panels, or the extended Safe D Link network with a cluster backbone. Let's select the biggest one. First select your network settings by choosing whether you want cloud connectivity and or a danger management system. If you choose the DMS, it will affect the calculations of the number of panels that can be used in the network. Let's select yes for both of them. For the third party BACnet connected DMS, it is necessary to select a license key to specify the permissions for the DMS. Now we are in the basic network configuration setup, which includes a basic cluster and backbone Ethernet. Now you can select different cable types for the backbone, such as single mode or multi-mode in this case. This will affect the network hardware used in the individual stations. The cluster itself can also have its cable type selected, including options such as copper, single mode, multi-mode, or copper cable with repeater. Once you have made your choice, you can add additional stations to the network by copying existing stations and specifying their desired location. For example, this one, and then select where you would like to add that station. Let's add a few stations here. As you can see, they now appear on the cluster itself. The stations can be moved to different parts of the system, either within the cluster or onto the Ethernet backbone by doing a drag and drop. This allows you to easily plan the network setup and visualize the overall network layout. It is also possible to add new clusters or copy existing clusters by clicking the copy button which will add a cluster with the same stations as the original. Additionally, it is possible to select the station with cloud connectivity. It is also possible to add empty clusters to the system. Each empty cluster always holds one router station and a backup station. We are going back to our initial network setup in the next configuration step which is the configuration of the station itself. Click on the name of the station to start the configuration. The following configuration steps apply to any standalone station. Having finished configuring the station, you can go back to the network. It is possible to use the completed station as a template to configure the other stations more easily. The backup router station can easily be adjusted. The main router station is always the one at the top, and you can change that by moving the stations around. This way the new top one becomes the router station. After configuring all the stations, you can continue to the next page. Here you can view a list for your whole project, and particularly your entire network. For example, you will see all the panels, extensions, and different loop devices for this station. Additionally, you can create a complete set of project documentation, including a list of all the selected devices and panels. An important benefit of the tools is that the panel network components are selected automatically, so you do not need to select them yourself. This is a powerful feature to ensure that you have the right equipment in the panel when creating a network. Now you can save the project and come back to it later to make any necessary adjustments. You can also rename the stations if required.
Thank you for watching this video.